Happy Easter, everybody, and welcome to City Lift Church at Home. Church family, we love and miss you. Can't wait to get back together to celebrate Jesus. Until that time, we're going to do all we can to keep us spiritually connected and continue to minister to you. And what an unprecedented time for the global church. First time in the church's history we are all celebrating Easter online. And uh, yet, I think it's an exciting time because we're joining millions of believers all around the world celebrating Christ's ultimate victory over death. And so even in the midst of everything we're facing, a huge reason to still celebrate today. So join us as we worship.
God, we ask that you just be here in this moment. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Happy Easter, City Live family. What an unbelievable time right now to be alive. The very first Easter in the history of the church that is all online. But, you know, the exciting thing is that we are joining millions of believers all around the world right now celebrating Jesus. I can't think of a better time to remind ourselves of Jesus's ultimate victory over death and pain and loss than right now. And so even though we're all going through this thing together, what a great reminder. We can still celebrate Jesus like never before. So wherever you're joining us, welcome. It's great to have you today. I'm sure you're with your friends, your family watching us right now. And so thank you for choosing to be a part of our service. And we love you guys. We miss you. Can't wait to get back together. And until then, we're going to do the best we can to stay spiritually connected as we all go through this. We don't want anybody to go through this thing alone. And so thanks for being a part of Easter 2020. Unbelievable time to be alive, but Jesus is still on his throne. God still raised him from the dead. And today we have an amazing reason to celebrate Jesus like never before. I want to begin today's service by reading Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to read it from the message translation this morning. I just like the way it says certain things. So if you want to turn there with me this morning or on your phones or just listen along, Matthew 28, chapter 28, we're going to start reading in verse 1. After the Sabbath, as the first light of the new week dawned, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to keep vigil at the tomb. Suddenly the earth reeled and rocked under their feet as God's angel came down from heaven, came right up to where they were standing. He rolled back the stone and then sat on it. I always love that little phrase that he rolled it back and then he sits on top of the stone like a boss. Uh, I, just, I just love that. Shafts of lightning blazed from him. His garment shimmered snow white. The guards at the tomb were scared to death. They were so frightened they couldn't move. The angel spoke to the women. There is nothing to fear here. I know you're looking for Jesus, the one they nailed to the cross. He is not here. He was raised just as he said. Come and look at the place where he was placed. Now, I love this verse seven. Now get on your way quickly and tell his disciples he is risen from the dead. He is going on ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. That's the message. What a great reminder. That is the message. He is risen from the dead. Now, you know, both Marys were so sincere in their approach, right? They, they wanted to honor Jesus. They were looking for him to, to, to honor his, his dead body and take care of it. And uh, they were very sincere in their approach. They were just looking in the wrong place. They didn't realize that God had already risen him from the dead and that God had moved on and he'd already brought about new life. And so many times in our lives, isn't it true that we are looking for something in the wrong place? Uh, maybe even our pursuit for God might be sincere, but it just might be in the wrong place. We don't realize that, man, God has already brought Jesus back from the dead and that he's wanting to give us new life and looking for us right now. Uh, a few months ago, I was on a, a conference and I went up to Orlando and it was an all day kind of deal. So by the end of it, my brain was pretty fried. I'm, I'm pretty tired. And so on the way back, I have to drive on the turnpike back to uh, Miami. And so, you know, I'm just tired. I'm trying to stop uh, at a, they have those little plazas in the middle and I'm trying to stop and get some coffee, get a snack, try to wake back up. I'm just so tired though, I didn't realize it. I got back on the North Turnpike instead of South. And so now I'm headed back to Orlando without me realizing I got, got a little turned around. Another 25 minutes goes by, I look at a sign, you know, and it's like exit for Disney World. And I'm like, exit for Disney World, what? And I realized, oh man, for the last 25 minutes, I've been going in the wrong direction. <laughs> and I have to realize I have to get off, turn around and, and come back. And uh, my, my pursuit to get home was so sincere, I, I was just going in the wrong direction. I was looking in the wrong place, just like the ladies here in Matthew 28. They're, they're looking, but just the wrong place, and the angel had to redirect them. And I think that's just so common in, in life, isn't it? I mean, we, we look for love sometimes in the wrong places. You, you know that relationship is not right for you. You know it's a bad soul tie, but, but we're so hungry to be loved and accepted 
we keep, keep it going, right? We, we keep keeping the bad relationship. Uh, maybe it's an offense that happened to you two years ago and you're still playing the argument over and over again in your head and you've not actually forgiven that person. Uh, maybe it's an ex. Uh, maybe it was an affair that you went through. Maybe, maybe it was an affair that you committed and you can't forgive yourself from it or something. And so maybe, maybe you were slandered. Maybe somebody felt insecure or jealous of you and they slandered you and you just can't seem to really get over that and it kind of stopped you in your track. So whatever it is, I think in, in our own way, we all kind of get nailed to our own crosses. And I think that we all kind of end up in our own tombs in life. And life is beautiful, it's, it's a blessing. Life is also really hard and challenging. It can be really, really tough. And I think it, wh whoever you are, wherever you come from, eventually, I think we all get nailed by something or someone. And we all find ourselves in those moments where it's like, man, I feel like I've just been buried under this thing and I, I don't know how to get out. And, and I know that I want love. I know that I want life. I, I, I want to search for respect and significance, uh, but I just keep going back to the same tomb. Could it be this morning that God would want to tell you like the angel told these ladies, hey, Jesus isn't here in this tomb. He's gone on ahead of you, that, that your pursuit is sincere, but you're just looking in the wrong place. And, you know, I think for me, when I was going back to Orlando, one of the first things that I needed was to realize I was going in the wrong direction. I needed to realize I'm driving in the wrong way and I've got to, I got to turn around. It's the grace of God that awakens our hearts to realize, whoa, I'm going the wrong way. I, I got to turn around. And I think for some of you right now listening, you're just getting awakened to the fact like, hey, I think I've been going the wrong way. I'm looking for life in a wrong place and I realize I need to make an adjustment. And some of you might say, man, isn't God mad at me right now, Pastor Matt? Like, isn't he mad at me for going in the wrong way? And to that, I would say there is no way at all. God is not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. God has poured all of his anger out on sin. And yes, it's true that God hates sin, but he loves you. God's poured all of his anger out on sin on the cross of Christ so that he could love you and he could accept you. And so right now, I think God, God's looking for you. And if you're a believer today, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think God is looking to take you to the next level. I think God is looking at you saying, hey man, how do I get that thing out of their life so, so I, they can become even more in love with me, they can get even closer to me? You know, I, I think we talk about holiness as, as a church family. Holiness is not about God trying to control us. It's about God trying to get close to us. He's just in love with us and he wants all those dead things out of our life so we can experience new life like never before. So just like the angel is saying, hey, he's, he's not here in this tomb, he's over here. I, I would say, hey man, why are you going to the tomb looking for new life when, when Jesus is actually, he's, he's over here, he's gone on ahead of you. That's, that's where you're gonna find all your life, all your love and all your significance. It's all wrapped up in the resurrected son of God. You know, God had Jesus walk out of his tomb so he could lead you out of your tomb. God had Jesus walk out of his tomb so he could lead you out of your tomb. Wow, what a thought. That's what, that's what God has done. I think for so many of us, we, we struggle a little bit with that fact because we realize how limited love is. You know, so much of our world is built on limited love, right? Limited supply. That's something right now we're all kind of finding a little bit more about is, is how limited certain supplies are. Um, right here, this, this is one of the rarest things in America. Come on, guys, this is some toilet paper and it, it has taken me a couple of weeks to, to get a hold of this guy right here. We've been using Kleenexes and baby wipes recently, okay? I'm not gonna give any more detail than that, uh, but we've realized how limited supply actually is, you know? And, and before this, I mean, we would only buy two-ply toilet paper, right? Like, come on, only, only the finest. And now I'm like, yo, give me one ply, I don't care, give me anything, like every shelf is empty, like just give me some toilet paper. Some of you, man, is, uh, is I'm just like holding this toilet paper out, you're just salivating. You're like, where do, where do I get me some toilet paper? You know, right now, this, this is liquid gold, right? So, you know, it's so funny, we've learned so much about limited supply. Can, can I remind us this morning that God's love is unlimited. He does not have a limited supply of love for you. Some of you, you even think, man, I'm not worthy of that kind of love. I don't deserve that kind of love. I, I've, I've not been faithful to God. I've not really used my life to pursue God. God still loves you with an unlimited supply of love. I want to read this out of Jeremiah. Such a great verse, Jeremiah 
31.3, the Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. I love that Hebrew word, everlasting, it's olam. And it, it means, I love this, it, it's long duration, right? From antiquity to all into the future. Everlasting, forever, always, continuous, perpetual, indefinite or unending through eternity. God's supply line of love does not run out for you. It, it, it is not a fickle thing. It, it is not here one day, gone the next. You see, some of you, that's all you've known in relationships. You've known in and out relationships. You've known people that cared about you one week and then forgot about you the next week. And so you think that's how a relationship with God could look like and it would work like that. Man, not at all. God is consistent, he's faithful, and his supply lines are long and unending. He can get power, life, and love to you right now. Now, I want to read this. I, I just, I thought it was so right on today for us in, at Easter. It's, it's Romans 8, and it just simply, Paul's reminding us, more than conquerors. And just listen to this for a moment, verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life. Is that the right hand of God and is also interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Will trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We're considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, verse 37, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels or demons, present or future or any powers, height, depth, anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Today, if you're in Christ, you are in victory. You are loved. And today, if you don't know God as your Savior, God loves you and He wants you. God is not being exclusive. He's being specific. He loves you. He wants you. He wants you to know His Son. Um, You'd say, man, you know, but Pastor Matt, like, I, I get it. I just, I just don't know if I can turn around. I don't, I don't know if I've got the strength to do that. Listen, like God allows us to make U-turns physically, God allows us to make U-turns spiritually. And right now, you can make a U-turn. Just as I was driving in the wrong direction, I had to realize I had to turn around and come back to the right direction. God will allow you to turn around. And you know what? You and I, we don't have the power to take ourselves to heaven. We don't have the power to live like heaven. God is not asking you to get your life together and then come to him. Religion says, you know, get, get it all together, man. Stop sinning, get your act together. You know, get over that hurt, get over that anger. Um, stop, you know, pretending you're gonna run over that person in your mind, you know, when you get all angry and then come to God and get everything right. That's, that's not what God is saying at all. God is saying, no, come to me and I'm gonna deal with the hate. I'm gonna deal with the anger. I'll, I'll deal with the prejudice. I'll deal with the sin. I'll deal with the lust. Give God your heart and God will work on your habits. Give God your heart and God will work on your thought life. Come to God. God, listen, God knows everything about you. He knows every thought you've thought, every feeling you've felt, everything that you've said and done, and he still made a huge decision to love you. You come to God and God will work for you from the inside out. Religion is all about changing us from the outside in. Jesus is all about changing us from the inside out. You know, I was 17 years old when I first gave my life to Christ. And at the time I was struggling with suicidal thoughts. I was deeply depressed. I, I didn't see uh, a reason for living. And I, I came from a great home with great parents and siblings that, that cared about me and loved me. And, I, and, but I just, I was totally void of life. And I was looking for it in all the wrong places. I was going back to tombs. I was trying to find life in, in the wrong direction. And I realized that at a point in my life at 17, I, I, said, I said a very simple prayer. I said, God, if you're real and you love me, I gotta know because I'm exhausted. 
I'm void of life. I, I don't I don't see reasons to live. I don't I I'm unsure about the future. I just I'm hurting. And I prayed a very simple prayer. And two weeks later, I encountered the presence of God like, like I'd never encountered before in my entire life. And God, God radically changed my heart. And I remember I called a friend afterwards and, and I said, I feel like someone has taken a cinder block off of my chest. I, I feel like I can breathe. I, I feel free. And for the first time in my life, I knew that God was real and I knew that God loved me. And what I've learned over the course of 20 years of following Jesus is everyone's experience is a little different. But what I do believe, if you reach out to God with a sincere heart, God will reach out to you. The Bible says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. If you come to God with a sincerity and say, God, I, I need your love, I need your life, I, I need to stop going to those dead places, I know I need a change in my heart and my life, man, this is the message of Easter that Jesus has been risen and he has power in life to change you from the inside out. He can go into all the dead places of your life and bring about a resurrection. You and I just need to come to a place where we trust him. That's what the Bible is actually talking about when it says to believe on him. It's me recognizing I don't have the power to change myself. I don't have the power to get myself there. I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna trust in the work that you have done. I'm gonna recognize the areas where I'm going wrong. And that even repenting, all that simply means is to make a turn. That's all repentance means is just to make a turn. God, I'm gonna make a turn where I know I'm going in the wrong direction and I'm gonna trust you. And guys, if you approach God with that heart where you're like, you're willing to make some turns and you're willing to trust him, God will do it. This morning, before I wind down, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and your savior, again, God's not mad at you. He loves you. He cares, decided, decided here this morning to tune in. I know so many of us, you wouldn't even come to church, a church building because you feel like you wouldn't be belonging or you would be judged, but you'll tune in. I'm so grateful you're here right now. I'm talking to you right now. Uh, those of you that just don't feel like you're worthy enough to even come to church, listen, none of us are worthy. None of us are perfect. We've all made mistakes, but Jesus is perfect. And that's our message that he's been risen from the dead. And this morning he loves you. He's not mad at you. He's ready to forgive you. He, he, he wants to wash all that sin away so you can be in a right relationship with him. How do we do that? Well, the Bible says that, first of all, we believe on him. And what, what, do we, what do we believe? Well, we believe that Jesus came to the earth, that he lived a sinless life, that, that he was crucified on a cross, and that God sent him to that cross for our sin, for, for my sin, for your sin. And if you were the only person that lusted, if you were the only person that lied, if you were the only person that was selfish, God loves you enough this morning to do that just for you. And he came for you so you could have new life. And so God put all that sin on Jesus so we could have the opportunity to be in a right relationship with him. And then the Bible says that Jesus died. But then on the third day, God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, brought Jesus back to life. And, and, and the cross is about love, but the resurrection is about power. The resurrection is our hope in a new life and new strength and new power. And that's what we're celebrating today as a church because all of our lives have been touched by the power of God. We've, we've been impacted by the power of the resurrection and you can too. So the Bible simply says that if we believe on the work of Jesus, and if we're willing to turn from what we know we're doing wrong to start doing things God's way, and that if we will pray and receive him in our hearts and confess him out of our mouth, that we will be saved. What a beautiful promise for you right now, Easter 2020, amidst everything we're going through, that you can be in a relationship with God, that, that you can turn around and have a loving, life-giving relationship with God. This is what Easter is all about. If you want that this morning, would you pray with me? A very simple prayer. Just say, Heavenly Father, I receive Jesus in my heart right now. God, forgive me of my sin and be my father. Give me strength to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Listen, if you prayed that prayer or this morning you've been away from church for a while, you know that you've gone to the tombs, but you prayed that prayer, you meant it in your heart, you wanna get back and right with God, would you go to our website? It's coming up on the bottom right now and, and just fill out an online connect card and let us know that you prayed that prayer. So we wanna connect with you. We're not gonna harass you or hit you up with a bunch of spam emails. We just wanna make an honest connection with you, help you take your first steps in your relationship with Jesus. Church fam, I love you guys. I miss you. Uh, I hope I reminded us all this morning of the power of Easter, the power of the resurrection, and, and everything that we're going through, we can still celebrate the life of God. He loves you with an unlimited supply of love. His love and care for us does not run out. Man, we've got all the reason in the world to rejoice and celebrate today. Thanks for joining us for Easter Sunday Church at Home. If you're new here, we would love to connect with you. Just go to our website, citylift.church, click new here and fill out the form and we'll be in contact with you. If you haven't yet joined a Zoom group, I wanna encourage you to join one. They're going on almost every night during the week, Monday through Thursday, with different city team leaders. Just go to our website, click on Zoom groups, you'll see the list of different groups, times, and the links to join the call. It's just a time for us to see each other's faces, to connect, to hang out, and also to pray together. Next Sunday, we're starting a brand new series called Family Matters Version 2. We did it last year and we're bringing it back again this year because we know that family matters to you, especially in this new season. How do we navigate it being stuck at home? Also remember to follow us on Instagram to stay up to date with everything that's happening with Church Online and different ways that we can connect. We're updating it daily and we want to stay connected to you. So we hope you have a wonderful Easter Sunday and we'll see you again soon.